This is Alf with Ripcard. Thank you so much for visiting the site here. Today I'm going to talk pretty quick because I'm going to just go through the different tools in the online editor for the ones that are venturing into designing their own cards. I do highly suggest that people get a designer to do this. It uh, could be had uh, for as little as a little bit under 30 bucks uh, for the online editor um, if they want somebody to do it for them. But if you want to have at it, uh, I want to support you in doing that as well. So it's totally up to you. And I'm here to support you either way. So you log into your account, you click on the sign card, and you open the online editor. If you want to do it with a designer, you can click on hire our designers over here, and then you could choose the different uh, designers um, right here, and you could see um, uh, the different uh, layouts and templates and what have you. Okay, and you fill in a form and and you answer question and upload your logos and images and stuff, and they'll send you. Uh, they'll they'll start working on the card for you. Okay, so you have a link up here too that says design card. So now we are opening the online editor, like I was almost starting to do earlier. Uh, I'm gonna go very quickly here, so hang with me. This is the text tool. You click on it, double click it, and then you start typing. Let's say cuts, for instance. You can do the fonts here, obviously. You can change the color of it. Um, you can uh, make it bold. You can make it uh, italicized or you underline. If you want to do that, you have to highlight it and then choose these commands. Okay. Now, if you want to turn the text sideways, you click on this one. You rotate vertical. Now, this rotate it and you position it. Um, if you want to make sure that you have it in the middle, then you're going to put the ampersand in. Choose the grid line. Uh, I then go to the clip arch and I choose this one and uh, it's uh, I could scale this down obviously uh, and make sure that I have it look exactly the way I want it then I place it exactly in the middle maybe this was a little off angle but you know I could do like this and also for images and stuff too I can use this to know the middle part of the left side or the middle part of the right side I'm gonna remove the grid and set it to normal what I always do uh, and I suggest to do too is to choose a background color. So I'm jumping from the text tools now where you can do text, color of the text, turn it one side, turn it the other way. Now I'm going to show you the, what I usually start with. I usually fill the background color on both the left and right side because otherwise you will have a white border around here unless you have a lot of white on the front. So then you could leave it white. But I highly suggest to use color here if you do have color. So I'm going to pick some uh, bright colors now so it stands out. Uh, kind of a reddish, or how about red and blue? Um, have this red, and then on the right side, I can choose this blue, which is standard, okay? Now, obviously, the text disappeared for me, so if I wanted to change the text color, I can just go to white and push all the way to the top, and now it becomes white. Um, and I could turn this sideways again, too. I'm not going to do that right now. I'm going to leave it up here. Um, then let's say you wanted to import an image. You click on insert image and you found an image, either logo or image you have on your computer. You have to be very, very careful that it's 300 DPI at least so that it prints out clearly. Okay. And some people have problems with uh, getting a background shadow or square box behind images. Uh, there's a very important fix for that. If you have Photoshop, go to FAQ on my website. I'm going to say uh, okay to leave without saving, so we're going to lose this when we come back, that's okay. Uh, I want to take it towards the bottom here, you'll see it right here, it says below are some general directions that will help you in Photoshop, okay, it's right here, those details. Read it very carefully, follow that, and you'll be good to go. Now I'm going to go to the top again, I'm back into the design card that doesn't have my settings because we didn't save it, but that's okay. Uh, let's say you wanted to have a square box or a line. Let's say you wanted to have a line here. You can grab this line. It's a little bit hard to grab sometimes and you could stretch it. You can also select it and put a thickness on it. So let's say you want it to be this thickness and go like that. Or you could make a box to have certain commands. Uh, Oh, no, I didn't. Oh, I need to click on it. Okay. Uh, you could stretch it and have it and fill it with colors or what have you, uh, or just have it for a place for people to fill in information. Okay. Um, so that's what these tools are for, and many different shapes here you can choose. Okay. Uh, choose from. Uh, then we have, obviously, if you wanted to fill this, you can do fill like that, and I could fill this with red if I wanted to. 
Uh, now, the other part, if you wanted to have uh, the backside, uh, when you're working on the backside, I'm sorry, I'm rambling on here. If you want to change these uh, grids here, uh, the way you have it lined up, some people want straight lines, obviously you know how to make that now. But if you want different types of symbols turn a different direction, you can do that too by selecting any of these, okay? And it'll insert, okay? Um, and here goes your name title, phone number, and all of that is explained in the other video that I made. If you want to, yeah, I, I showed you the clip art as well. Let's say we go to the front side again. This is a very important uh, command I find some people have problems with or run into. Let's say you have an image here, and then a background image, and then another image, and some of them are overlapping, and suddenly you it seems like they disappear, you don't find it. Click somewhere away from any kind of image, uh, on that half that we're talking about, click away, make, you hear me make a click now, then click on this one, send backwards, then it's going to bring everything to front. I don't have the images here to show you the example, but click away from all images and text, and then click on that one, okay? Very important one. Save every five minutes. This is the button right here. You want to save your artwork and quickly be able to um, make sure that you didn't lose any of the work. Many people tell me, oh, I, I worked on thing for 45 minutes and then I lost everything because they had a spotty internet connection or the browser had a hiccup or something. So save every five minutes. Otherwise, you'll have a lot of problems with it, okay? Uh, and if you first have a problem, I say start from scratch. Just don't try to fix it. I'm sorry to say that because it does something to it in the browser that I don't know how to explain or fix. Now, zoom artwork button. Very, very important button. I'm going to show you about this one because it uh, has to do with the text and sometimes some text gets cut off. So um, you need to deal with that. The other buttons are pretty straightforward. If you're going to delete something, just hit select the, the, the image or the text and hit the scissor. Okay. And this is uh, undo and redo commands. Okay. And obviously you saw the grid. So I'm going to show you the zoom artwork. If I had a file here now that was saved, I can go to zoom artwork. But you always have to save first. So I'm going to just going to go to... Uh, artwork I have in my account already and I'm gonna click on um, I'm gonna load it into the preview artwork so this is what um, you will see too in your account you will see these thumbnails once you saved it and then to look at it again or edit it again you just click on this and it uh, loads in for you but if you want to preview it same as zoom artwork you can click on preview artwork and you have, an, a, way, have a way to actually zoom in for 180% so now you can take a very close look at the letters and everything. And this is basically your sign off on your proof. So you want to make sure none of the text is touching the spread, uh, the, the, the perforated line. And you can see we're far away from it where we want to be. And then we can look at the backside too. And you want to look at all the text. There's no Y. It's not the bottom part of Y is not cut off or anything like that. And the, you see these little gray boxes here. Uh, square boxes may be hard to see on the screen, but there's one gray box here and one gray box there. Never ever put any text, image, or anything over here. This is where the printer puts the serial number. So that's why I put these little boxes there, because people tend to want to put stuff there. So don't move it in any way, up or down, sideways, needs to be exactly there. That's just the way it works. So when you come back again, you are here, and that's your account. And uh, now I've shown you very quickly the different tools and how you could do it online. Um, or we could have somebody do that for you because the important part that you need to realize when you design these cards is that usually this right side of the card depending on what you do of course is the one that you give away and that's the back side here of that part so this half is also this half but the other side just like this half is the front but it's here's the back side of that half okay and that's what I'm trying to explain over here okay so um, anyway that's it I uh, hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, email me uh, or us at support at ripcar.com. We'll be happy to help you out. Happy designing and happy ripping. Bye.